Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Uh, as always, I would like to thank you all for tuning in and I really hope you've been enjoying my page. If so, please hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the page just there to stay up to date with all the weekly content. Today we're gonna go through six different ways you can progress your workouts in a gym environment. Some of these principles can be used when doing other forms of exercise, of course, but for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna talk about gym-based progressions. So as you know, when you start doing any type of exercise, it starts tough at the beginning and progressively gets easier as you go along. What you have to do in this case, as you all already probably know, is make the workout a little bit tougher each time. This is what's known as progressive overload within the industry. We do this because if we don't adapt to the adaptations that we get from training stimulus, then we slow down our progress. So our, our fitness kind of stays at, at, at a certain point. So we have to then progress the workouts so that we can keep progressing ourselves. Now, like I said previously, this is true with any style of fitness, whether you're doing gym work, whether you're running, rowing, cycling, swimming, it doesn't really matter. That is true to any of those types of training, any type of exercise. One thing we want to point out though is just, you know, be careful not to, you know, go crazy here. You don't have to make loads and loads of changes week by week by week to see progress happening. Okay, these changes can be small tweaks here, tweaks there to the program. Okay, and I'm just going to go through kind of a protocol that I would use for my clients and for myself, which is a really measured and steady way of progressing your workout. So what are the six ways that I'm gonna give you today? They are, you can increase the amount of reps that you do for a certain exercise. You can increase the amount of sets that you do, so the amount of volume that you do within a session. You can decrease the rest times between each set, which makes it harder, of course. You can increase the weight that you're lifting. You can increase the time under tension. So you, the longer, you take longer to do a rep basically. So instead of doing a rep for, that takes two seconds, you do a rep that takes for five. And finally, you increase the frequency, which is how many sessions you do in a week. So let's do it in the order that I would make those changes. So the first thing I would try and do is get someone to maybe lift a weight, keeping it really simple maybe find a weight that they can lift for eight reps and over the course of two to four weeks, see if they can progress that to 12. So they've increased how many reps they can do on a single weight. That's probably the first change I would make. It keeps it nice and simple. It gives you two to three weeks of progression there that's nice and steady and measured. I would then follow that on by adding maybe another round to the end of, of the exercises. So instead of doing, I don't know, three rounds of 12, you might do four rounds of 12 in week three or four, whereas you might have done three in weeks one or two, okay? So what you're doing there is you're increasing how much total work you do in one session, however long that session might be. So that's the second step is you increase the volume and the, am the amount of time you, you spend exercising in one hour or hour and a half, whatever it is, however long it is that you are training for. The next step here could be to decrease the rest time between each, between each individual set. So what that essentially does is it makes it much harder for you to maintain the reps that you want to do with each round. So it get a really good way, if you're looking to increase endurance of a muscle, that's a really good way of doing it. And it makes the uh, total workout much, much tougher. So that's a really good way of progressing the program. The next change would be, that what I would make would be to increase the time under tension for each round. So simply put, you would, some, often spend between 30 and 40 seconds doing an exercise. So you maybe move a weight on a chest press up for one and down for one, that's two seconds per rep. To increase the time of the tension, you could simply do something like you move the weight up for one and down for three or four seconds. So all of a sudden you've gone from a two second rep to a five second rep. What that does is it makes the muscles fatigue much earlier in the round, okay? So again, if you're, if, if you're looking to create a measured approach, this is just another thing you can do before you start to put the weight up so you increase the time and detention. That could be a change you could make. These previous changes could be make it, change changes could be made at any time. If you know, what I mean, this is the pro, this is the um, order that I like to do them in. But there's nothing stopping you from increasing the time and detention earlier, increasing the volume later, whatever. But that's just another progression here 
uh, increasing the amount of time you take to do an individual round. Usually around this point, we're kind of three to five weeks in. We've made like a change a week, maybe, or maybe a change every two weeks. But let's say we're three to five weeks in. At this point, I would start to think about putting the weight up for an exercise. Now, you can always put the weight up if the weight workout is too easy. OK, so if you find that you can stick to these criteria and it's really, really easy, then then put the weight up. You've got to find the correct weight for those rep ranges. But let's say we found the correct weight for those rep ranges. We've made these small changes week by week by week. We're three to five weeks in. Now's the time to increase load, but start again. So you go from, let's say we're doing four rounds of 12 on a chest press. You've increased the time and detention. You've decreased the rest time. Put the weight up. Start again at eight and build the process up, all of a sudden you've created five weeks of programming and then you're starting again to build five weeks of programming. We've talked about this in the podcast before, that consistency is king here. And sometimes an exercise, certain workouts can be a bit more samey and boring, but actually that's where you're gonna get the best um, progress. So once you put the weight up, bring the reps down and create those changes again and again and again. The sixth one, and I would always do this one last, is to increase the frequency of which you train. So what that means is increase how many sessions you do in a week. So let's say you start with one, maybe two in a week, then you could push that up to three or four, but I do know more than that, um, unless you are strictly a strength-based um, athlete or go on to go into some sort of bodybuilding or something like that. If you want a balanced workout, three to four strength sessions is plenty, but Work your way up to that as well. So everything needs to be kind of drip fed in there. You don't want to be giving yourself way too much to way too many changes to cope with. So I give yourself a couple of phases of the changes we talked about earlier. And then you can start increasing the frequency, the amount of sessions you do in a week. But just remember, guys, make sure you are enjoying the workouts that you're doing. Enjoy the process. Try and think about the what the resistance training is doing for you. OK, I spoke about this in previous posts that usually resistance training is, is an enabler for you guys to do other things, you know, other sports, messing around, running around with the kids and stuff and just, you know, maybe going for walks, so whatever it might be. Try and enjoy the process, though, because remember, this is enabling you to do X, Y and Z. And don't forget, guys, if you are a person who likes to do outdoor activities or other type of training that isn't gym based, you can adopt these same progressions to that as well. Let's take running as an example. It's probably the most simple one we can use. You can start by increasing the intensity. So, for example, you can you can do a run that lasts 10 minutes, a course of course, let's say a mile long, and you can try and increase how quickly you do that course week by week. That's increasing the intensity. Then you can then go into trying and increasing how long you go for, so the volume, so you can increase the length of time. So instead of doing a mile, you'll then do two, three. And then finally, you can increase the frequency, so how many runs you do in a week. So the progressions, as you can see, are still there. We won't go into adding weighted runs or anything like that. Let's just keep it simple. But you can see these progressions are transferable to any type of exercise that you do. But like I said, guys, make steady changes, okay? Make the changes small, continual, so you can keep them up and continue to pro progress. You're not going to win any medals trying to push yourself into the ground. And in fact, it may be counterproductive because it may end up you may end up getting injured and then you're not training. So make those changes, make them steady and see your workout as a way of life. Enjoy it. It should make you feel better. And you will. Once that was all in place, you will start getting results. That's it from me, everybody. I'll see you all next week. Hope you're enjoying the videos and don't forget to hit subscribe.